that is that better okay and i will move <clears throat> how's that catching it okay good all right welcome welcome to the ohi retreat my name is ellen hall and i'm here to interview mark whitman about a very hot topic in ohi and that's the idea of having an art school at the ohi Ohio Unified School District offices. Yeah. Right. And it is the first in a series of it's kind of doing funny things. Got it? Okay. It's the first in a series of community issues. We're going to do one every month and do an interview with people in the community that so we can have discussions about some of the issues. Okay, um, but Mark, before we get started in this topic for today, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you were raised in a family of artists. I'm interested, and I think the group is interested in particularly your, your life with art. And um, I pr I'm wondering if you did a lot of drawing when you were a little kid, <laughs> you know, because that's mostly what artists do when they're children. So I wonder if you could share that with us. Sure. There. Um, yeah, my family, um, we moved here to, in Ohio um, in 1969. And my mother was an artist, Nancy Whitman, you probably know her. And um, she would always encourage us as kids to, um, she'd lay out art projects with us. And she even had like little family competitions between um, myself and my three bro three brothers and a sister. And we uh, would all do art competitions within each other. And, uh, and, and so as I grew up, I was always drawing, you know, diddling and with a pen and ink. And, and uh, later on, and I, I started doing cartooning. I was, I was really um, kind of an avid cartoonist as a, um, in high school. And, and then, um, and then later on, um, became more serious. Uh, uh, after I graduated from college, I actually took two years off, and uh, and and just, all I did was artwork, and um, and was, try was actually trying to my hand as an artist. And then uh, I was a starving artist, kind of, uh, and I got tired of being broken and, and went back to my architecture career. But uh, but I've always um, just uh, been very very passionate about doing art. Uh, how did you develop your signature design style how, in architecture? Um, um, when I went to architecture school, I went out to Arizona State University, and um, it was introduced to you know all kinds of architecture from all over the world. And and when I saw um, the work of, of Gaudi and Antonio Gaudi in Spain. I was just, you know, just drawn to that. It was just, you know, he, it was just so magnetic and, and, um, and it was, it just really moved me as an, um, as an artist. And, and so I kind of um, developed this kind of organic style and there were some other architects as well. Um, there was an architect out in Arizona that was practicing um, uh, Apollo Soleri, who was doing a lot of really interesting organic shapes with earthen structures. And uh, there's a few other architects. John Lautner here in LA was he was more of a modernist, but he did some amazing organic modern structures. And so I was just drawn to the, that kind of style and uh, just kind of developed that. Um, you know, the mission or the Adobe style kind of lends itself to um, kind of being more organic and softer, and kind of sculpting with with the you know with the shapes. And uh, I did. <coughs> I, I think it's uh, for me. It's just a, a, a way to you know play with the architecture and create interesting sculptural you know forms and shapes. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Okay, let's get into it then. Okay. What what is your idea for an art school at the Ojai Unified School District offices? All right, that's a big question. Yeah, that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> Uh, enough about me. <laughs> um, well, um, you guys, everybody here was aware of the, you know, the controversy um, 
with the proposal uh, at, the, at the school district. But before that, that actually the school district opened up the um, the the offices and and invited people to come and tour the space. And and they were saying, hey, we're we're open to um, letting this property go. And that was a while back, about five years ago. And uh, so I took part in that tour and that discussion. There's also some discussions about um, keeping the, uh, the school district property historic. And I was in favor of that. I think, um, you know, I, I feel it's, it's uh, got a lot of history here in the community. I remember um, growing up as a kid and it was still an elementary school. And it was all the, all the, I went to Summit Elementary School. It was all the cool kids that went to the Ohio yeah. Elementary School. And, uh, and it just had a kind of enamor of being the special school in town. And so uh, when the property came up, um, I, I looked at it and I, was, I started thinking about it. But um, I knew I didn't personally have the means to um, move forward with a proposal at that time. Um, but then when the playground uh, proposal came forward and I was just like, oh my God, I was like, aghast. But I said, there's no way this is this can happen because it's just so preposterous to see this happening in Ojai. But as it moved forward, I was like, oh my God, it's, it's a possibility. And um, I was ready to start protesting <laughs> during the protest. But then, you know, Trevor, Trevor did a great job. He, he I, I congratulate him for coming forward and, and rallying the troops and and doing exactly what needed to be done with that proposal and um, and seeing that. Um, you know, that was, it would have been the worst thing, worst um, since the freeway um, that, that would ha to happen to Ojai, which we, we prevented that from happening as well. But um, <clears throat> I was hearing all the, you know, commotion about uh, how terrible the proposal was and it's awful. And um, uh, Kevin Ruff, I, I talked to him, you know, casually, um, and he, uh, we we're, were all in the, and he was against the proposal as well. And, and, and we were both kind of saying, oh, this is, this is terrible. And, um, and he said, well, why don't you do something? Why don't you put, to, um, put together an idea and, and, you know, why don't you come up with something? And, and so I thought about it and thought about it. What would be the best use for the community? <clears throat> what would the people of Ojai really like? But also what would maybe change the, the texture of, of the community for the better? And, um, and I, was, I was thinking like an art school would be, you know, just would bring in so much great new energy and, and uh, you know, bring in some young people who are interested in the arts and some creative um, folks who, who would really interject, you know, whole new energy into the community. And, um, you know, we're always complaining about the tourists and I, 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 I'm in the tour, my, my wife and myself, we have the Emerald Iguana Inn, so... We're, we're, you know, we're part of the tourist industry, but um, I, you know, I always told people, well, if, if you don't want tourism, what, what kind of industry do you want here in Ojai? What, what is the substitute for a tourist um, economy? And I think maybe like this, this art school, you know, could be, you know, um, I don't think it would substitute it, but it could maybe take a, a you know, a, a, front and center stage to the community as being, hey, this is what Ojai is all about. This is Ojai is an artist, you know, creative. We have creative people here. You know, we have all kinds of creative people here. And, and this is who we are as a people. And so I think it, it could um, go a long ways in that regards as well. Um, but mostly it's just, you know, I see that school district property as just sort of a benign, you know, kind of, it's just, it's, you know, there's, I know there's classes and things going on there, but it feels to me is it's just not being utilized as it's right here in the center, right in the middle of town. It's like the, the, the hub of the community and it could really turn into something really dynamic, but, that, but then again, and also something for um, a, a community-based um, use as well. And so that was my idea of how that came about, okay. <laughs> yeah. That, that's how it came about. And then what's your idea for what to do there? Besides <laughs> saying an art school, you, you drew some, um, when we break, you'll be able to come up and look at some drawings that he's done for proposal for the art school and how it would use the buildings. But I wonder, are you interested in discussing that? Yeah, a little? sure. Yeah. Okay. So um, I mean, my idea is to, is to um, 
reuse all the structures. I mean, it's it's the greenest way to build um, these days is to um, is adaptive reuse of existing structures. It, it, um, building new structures is a you know has has a huge um, carbon footprint on the environment, and uh, to be able to reuse and just adapt what we have is is the least um, um, impact you know to the environment. And so I would I would suggest we don't. Um, Tear down any of the structures, but maybe add to, add to it. And and I went went through and say, okay, we can we can take um, some of the back structures and those metal um, warehouses in the back, and they, they could be like welding or or sculpting or or ceramic studios or or you know, some kind of you know workshops back there. And then the classrooms, it could be um, you know, well, I I tag that that elementary school as a great oil painting. <laughs> School. That's what I, that's what I do, and I've been to a lot of art schools um, around the country, and went to Florence for a little stint at art school, and and um, and they and they can be very successful um, bringing in um, uh, visiting artists to do workshops, and um, and so that space in the back I thought would be a perfect place for an oil painting or painting school back there, and then the other classrooms, it, you know, it's, I just kind of tag you know dance and and theater and, and uh, you know, maybe you know, photography and, and uh, all, uh, you know, I was just trying to, you know, encompass all the arts that may be possible, but it's kind of an open, you know, it's, it's a, that was just my stab at it. I think it would be, you know, who would want to come forward and, and create something there and make, make something happen? Who are the, who are the um, teachers who would want to make something happen? In the front, I thought it'd be great to um, maybe uh, develop the, the front portion um, into a cooking school and maybe having a developing commercial kitchens behind the front portion. And then behind that would be a community center, a big, uh, big open um, space that could house, you know, you know, a few hundred people that could also be um, leased out for events or maybe like a wedding venue. And, and so the, the economics of the project, um, I, I think that would be the, the first, I don't know if that's, we're going into this yet, but I think the economics is really important. And so um, to attract uh, people who would want to support the project, I think, um, you know, if there's, we're going to get a loan or money or, or whatever, I think the economics needs to work out. So I think one of the first things that needs to happen for any kind of idea is to develop a business plan and, uh, and, and find out what, you know, these kind of schools what kind of income you know would generate and then um and then what's the cost of the improvements um and then you know it's, it's something that we developers do all the time but you know you figure out what your costs are and, and what your income is going to be and 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 if there's a shortfall how are you going to you know how are you going to make that up well i'd like to back up just a little bit to okay. to what um We'll get there because we really have to look at the practicality of doing some right. a vision, this big vision, right. how, how right. practically is that going to happen? Right. But I just wanted to add a few things. Uh, since you wrote this article uh, about having an art school, there have been all kinds of discussions in town. And the ones that I've been aware of, I'm just aware of a short number of them, are um, the possibility of having uh, a, more of an adult education center that would have art school as one thing, but also have environmental studies, which is something that's very much Ojai, and have <clears throat> environmental studies there. And also what you, you mentioned, those, those kind of barns in the back of being a maker's space where you could um, learn trades. That's been one big idea that came up. And another one came up was that we have so many teachers in Ojai we could have something that enhanced teachers' education. Uh, adult education, kind of from many angles, is what uh, your your article stimulated. And I'm I'm just wondering what you think about all that because you know you got everyone going. And, <laughs> and then how how do you feel about all those ideas and possibilities? Yeah. Um, well, my original, you know concept would it was the art school but also i think it's really important for it to be a community-based um, project and um 
And so, um, you know, right now I'd say, you know, yeah, everybody, let's, let's all have input and let's all come forward and say, this is, you know, what we think it should be. Um, and, you know, that's the politician in me saying, yeah, yeah let's, let's create a movement here. I think it's going to take a movement, a political movement to, to move the school district and, you know, let's, let's all, let's all get together and, and see, make this happen. But I think, uh, eventually, um, or maybe right away, we'll get a steering committee together and uh and start discussing these ideas and seeing what's the most practical and what's what's going to work out the best for the community and i think um also eventually i think we need to set up a nonprofit and 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 have it be part of a nonprofit. so there would be a board that um you know would be selected and then um maybe subcommittees that would be part of the board and uh and that it would it would be you know a community decision to you know what what to see what would happen there yeah, the non <clears throat> the nonprofit um, would un enable a, the, a group to um, get grants and to have donations. It would really uh, enable funding in in a way that if the funding has to come from the community, it, we would need to start a nonprofit to do to do any kind of adult education there. Um, so let's see. Uh, there are some issues uh, that have come up um, in conversation with different people. One of them is traffic. Is this going to create a whole big traffic problem? In how and how will you house people if people come to um, sign up to the school to an art school? Where where are they going to live? I mean, it's so expensive to live here. How can students afford to live here? Those issues, those practical issues of traffic and housing are things that will need to be addressed. We can't possibly address them today, but I think, I think some ideas around that might be helpful if you have any. Yeah, I'll, uh, there's a couple other elements I didn't mention um, in the plan I presented was um, would, there's a, a affordable house, housing element. And so, um, but I thought that would be maybe more for the, the teachers, maybe it would be for the students as well, but I was thinking like a mix, some mixed use units where the artists could um, have studios downstairs and, and live upstairs, kind of a, kind of a community that um, you know where they would you know could survive commercially as well as being teachers. Um, but also um, also thinking of a little um, not a little hotel, but um, uh, hostel that would be a part of the project where visiting um, students. Would have a you know could who couldn't afford to stay in hotels and whatnot could have a, a economical place to stay while they're taking you know the workshops or classes and so a dormitory of, of such and so um that would be also part of the project as far as traffic goes um yeah everything creates traffic and so we got you know and but i think like a workshop um kind of a business plan where people come in during the week and maybe you know the hours are such that we're not impacting the rush hour traffic, um, but uh, when people you know um, come and stay for a week, and then leave on you know on Friday and and don't impact the, the you know the weekend you know uh, rush that we're having, um, you know it, it, it there'd have to be a traffic study done and and, and analyzed, but there maybe there's conditions put on the project that uh, where we minimize the, um, the peak hour traffic. Another thing that has come up is uh, if we can continue to have the things that are there now, can the preschool stay there? Can farmers market stay there? How about the skate park? We had such a hard time getting that skate park there. You know, these are some things that people in the community are attached to and worried about. And I think in a way you answered that in the, in the idea that we would have a community come together to make a plan. And those things would be honored in the community decisions. So, unless you want to say more about that. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think it's the skate, the skate park was a long, hard fight to get that in. I, yeah. I can't see uh, moving it anywhere else. I think it was discussed over and over again. And yeah. it was like 10 years in the making. And so, yeah. So, I think, um, I think it's a good place for it for the kids to. Um, to do their thing and and uh, you know 
and have it be safe, a safe place for, for them to, to come to. Um, as far as the other uses, yeah, I, I would, I would, I don't want to see it, the, the idea of the art school get too diluted. <laughs> that was my initial thinking. And I think the community center in the middle of it could be something that uh, could bring, you know, some of the community uses and things like that. Um, but again, it, it'll be up to, I think, a, a board and, a, and a, a steering committee and then maybe a board and, and, and subcommittee. Yeah, I'm glad you said that about getting diluted because you have um, stimulated a lot of conversation and whether that uh, just becomes everybody's idea and kind of fades away is a problem. Right. It's a possibility. So um, it would need a, a, a real focus yeah. by a committee yeah. of right. some kind. Right. Yeah. All right, well, um, <clears throat> we can move on to community and questions. You can't hear me? Oh dear, let me, um, how's that? Is that better? Oh, I'm so sorry. I could have done that earlier. Should we start over? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna go on to questions and comments in a minute. Um, but first I wanna thank you, Mark for being here and bringing this idea to the community. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I um, yeah. Nicholas Oatway, he's here in the audience and he, he's been working on a plan as well. And so, you know, we've, we've been talking with, with each other and, and we're, and so it's not just me. I think it's, I think there's a lot of people who are kind of in the same wavelength. Um, I think David Burry had, had done some plans for like a performing arts center there at one time. And so there's a lot of, a lot of thinking. It's not just, I don't, I don't want to take full credit okay. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, before we do the questions and comments, I'd like to make two little announcements. Um, this is the, let's see, the, the community issues. This is the first in a series of community issues. And the next one will be, um, Let's see, uh, on April 9th, and we'll have the Ojai Valley News here. You know, the Ojai Valley News has new owners and they have, a new, um, they have new ideas for their future. And they also have some challenges that they would like to share with the community and get the input. So <clears throat> they'll be here on April 9th. And then, um, the retreat is going to do a benefit concert for Ukraine. And they'll have, that is on April 3rd from four to six. And Smitty and Julia are going to host it with many other Ojai musicians. So that will, the, the fund will go to meals for the refugees. All right. And I would like to unwind up the day today by around four o'clock. So uh, we'll, we'll do, um, after that, people can linger, some can leave and some can linger and have refreshments and more discussion, but I'm just kind of wind it up then. And so um, now what we'll do is any, we'll, we were gonna pass a mic around, but it's not gonna work. So what, what we're gonna do is you're gonna have to come up to the mic to ask your question. Oh, that one. All oh, right. Okay. Victoria can handle the mic. That's great. Okay. All right. So why don't you, I hate to do this. It's so schoolish, but why don't you raise your hand and I'll call on you and then you can go over and do that. Okay. Well, then go ahead. Yeah. You could start. Can you reach it? Okay. And then you could be next. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I really like the idea. It's, it's a wonderful idea for the community. And I wondered, uh, you had you had mentioned um, uh, the school in Florence, and I wondered if you could point to other examples where this has been done successfully. Um, someone just pointed out a community center in Oregon. Uh, it's called Sitka. And it, it, actually, it's a, it, it was called the Arts and Ecology uh, it, um, Center. And, um, and so it's, that, that's something, I don't know how successful it is, but it, it's something that maybe we can consider 
but I also went to uh, did a workshop at the Scottsdale um, uh, Art School, and it's in downtown Scottsdale, and um, and they they were, they were very successful. They had f f filled up workshops every week. And they brought in visiting artists from all over the country, and um, you know the, the thing about Scottsdale is it's it's known as a art community with some really nice galleries, and I think Ohio could be that way too. I think we could start. Um, promoting, you know, Ohio more artistically instead of the shops for the tourists, we could have more uh, artwork for art collectors. <laughs> but um, uh, I also I spent some time down in um, Los Angeles at this school called the LA Academy of the Figurative Arts, and they had a really um, successful program where they, had, you know, brought in um, it was workshops and also uh, full time students that took part in that um, school. So those are my experiences. Um, besides, just taking private workshops at, of art schools, and so. Uh, but I think we would need some people who are more experts at art education and and directing. You know those those kind of programs. Um, that, I'm, that's not my forte. I'm I'm an you know I'm an artist, and <laughs> I like to have some uh, facilitators or educators. I have to speak into the mic. Uh, we can, we can hear you. Uh, first of all, they were excellent questions, and your ideas are, are so exciting and stimulating. Uh, I would like to remind everyone that uh, we had a similar, similar uh, sort of development in Oakview where Barbara Kennedy uh, transformed a public school into a community center and paid for it with parcel tax. And we can do that here if they did it. Uh, I also would like to quote uh, or bring up some of the quotes I've seen from Mark, which are, that 50% of our commercial buildings in Ojai are empty, and that those can be uh, repurposed for housing that we uh, know is needed for low income people. And uh, there is Carolyn Goldwasser, a resident of Ojai has suggested that the bowling alley could be uh, used as a hostel, again, repurposed. And I also like to remind everyone that um, open space is something we don't want to lose. So I'm completely in favor of repurposing the existing buildings, but against the new buildings that you have indicated on your plan. And there's so much more to say that we all have to come back <laughs> once more, just dedicated to my thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, well, thank you. Yeah, I, I don't know where the question was, but I'd like to talk about that parcel tax idea. Um, actually, Kevin Ruff, he said uh, an avenue for um, the school district to let go of that and and um, make it part of the community um, would be uh, to pass a parcel tax, um, and and that and that would be you know the funding that they're looking for um, with the sale of the property or the lease of the property, and so if 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 the community can get behind that as a trade-off, um, passing a parcel tax for the school district, which would, would, uh, you know, create the the financial surplus that they're looking for, um, in exchange for the the school district property, that that could be a way of of uh, seeing this thing happen. I, I heard that I talked to someone who who was in the city council, and he stated that the property cannot be sold. It has to generate income. The income has to come from the school district. I don't understand that. Is there anyone here who can explain that to me? Because 
because mm -hmm. the way he described it, it sounded like that could not be done. You guys all know Bill. He's our city council person. Yeah. One of the I don't think I was the one, one who of the good said guys. That. <laughs> yeah. Um, this raises a really basic point, as you just did, as well, in terms of the money the school district was expecting. Right. There is a notion that the fiduciary responsibility requires monetizing that property. That is a false premise. Okay, I've been involved in this from the beginning to make sure the city maintained its zoning oversight and design oversight or whatever may happen. And a public piece of land is held, you know, as the stewards of that are the school district. And this is a fundamental question. Should the maximizing the public good be the goal or maximizing the monetizing cash flow be the goal those are not the same thing by any means and so the school district was told by their council that they had a fiduciary responsibility to maximize the monetizing value it's simply not true and when you talk about the money they're expecting from it the appraisal that generated that number was based on uh, um, assuming uh, whatever zoning and whatever design the school district wanted, the city would approve it, big assumption. And then second of all, they used as comparables to come up with the ground lease numbers, th types of businesses that are not legal in Ojai, like fast food joints in Agora Hills, <laughs> literally. I, 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 I saw the appraisal. So I, I don't think uh, there's nothing legally in state education code that I have seen and I've asked people about it that requires monetization of the land. What it asks for in the education code is a whole process of maximizing the public good and they're not the same thing. Thank you so much, thank you. Yeah, these, I think these are the kinds of issues that a community would have to really deeply look at and have clarity about. Um, but, but the overriding vision is a vision of uh, art school that would support the artistic community here in Ojai. And how would we work out all those things? They're all, um, you know, different groups, the city council, the school board, we have, all the artist community, we have the environmental groups, we have that, um, the architects that want to build um, buildings that don't compromise our, our uh, climate crisis. There's a lot of, there are a lot of issues, but <clears throat> it, I, I just, this is my opinion now, I shouldn't really do that, but is, you know, is, is that, um, Right now, when you drive past, you know, across the street from the Duchess, which is really lively now, it, and you drive past that building, it's not alive. It doesn't have a life force in it that matches Ojai's quality and character. And it can, you know, with all the amazing creative people in Ojai, it can have that quality. And I just, um, I just really appreciate uh, Mark for bringing it forward in the way he's kind of being a champion for this idea. So um, is there someone else with a comment or question they would like to have? Yes. Uh, this is premature to raise your hand. Uh, you did it. Uh, no, no. No, no. Uh, uh, I don't have a question, but uh, my neighbor has an offer to Can everyone hear him or would? Okay, step. yes. sitting around on an informal basis uh, to discuss this and the goal or purpose of that get together would be to create a list of to-do items, mm -hmm. things that need to be restored. Models of art schools that have been successful, 
elsewhere. Um, just mm -hmm. a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. And by identifying the various areas that need to be looked into, um, hopefully people will be interested in getting involved mm -hmm. in doing some research and putting some flesh on those mm -hmm. bones. Mm -hmm. The bones look really good to me. Mm -hmm. Based on my experience working with organizations and new organizations, uh, especially, I suggest that would be a logical next step. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's an organizing kind of thinking that well, is important, and that's your thing. That's my thing. All right. That's what, that's what, Go ahead. That's what I do. Yeah. What's the time frame? And what's the urgency? <clears throat> um. Well, right now the um, you know the 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 project or the um, the idea of it from the school district of developing the property is off the table. They 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 dropped the playground proposal, and they're according to the superintendent, they have no interest in revisiting the proposal at this time. They're kind of burnt out on that. And, and I guess there's uh, three uh, spaces that are becoming available on the on the school board and. Um, and so I think maybe the, another first thing is maybe to, you know, to start a, um, a, a political movement that would get uh, the school uh, people on the school board in favor of, of this idea. Um, and so um, that I think it'll be a long process, and uh, and I I don't see this happening anytime quickly. I see it taking years. Um, I, I see it see it as a movement as well as. as Getting the community excited about it and um, and getting a groundswell going, and I think that'd be the 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 first step. And and like you said, you know, get you know, start having some informal meetings and and getting the community involved. And and um, there's no urgency, <laughs> but uh, it, right now this this it's it, this the school district property is just going to stay as is as it's currently being used, and so. Um, um, the, the answer is it's going to take a long time to, I think, to get something going. Or maybe not. <laughs> That's my, my input. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Good questions. It's a complicated issue. Um, um, I'm, I'm outside the valley as well. <laughs> Uh, but the um, the proposal would need to be approved by the, the city council. So that we need the city the city would need to be in favor of the idea. I think Bill has indicated you know that that they would be with this idea of the of the community art center, and so they're they're all for that. Um, as far as getting the rest of the community, the parcel tax would be a community wide a, a valley wide um, um, issue. We'd have to get the whole valley to to say yes. We're, we agree to uh, this parcel tax in exchange for this the school district property. Have you yet had conversation with the music community, the art art? What, the South Montgomery Arts Center, the Film Society, the other subsets of the general art community in, in the Valley, even little uh, short conversations? Um, no. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it, um, the idea you know, kind of came for myself. I haven't really um, gone out too far. And Ellen now is, is kind of like, I think this talk is pushing this forward, um, but I think you know, all the art community needs to come together and, and talk about it. I know there's a, a representative, uh, Mike Box is here from the dancing community, and he's interested in, in being part of the, of the center as well. And so there's all kinds of interest. And I think you know, 
starting a steering a, a steering committee, maybe bring in um, members from all the different um, uh, groups that would want to be part of it would be the would be something to do. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to highlight the point that this gentleman made, um, and you made the point that this would take years, most likely. Right. But that it would take years doesn't mean we have to wait no. for a group uh, like this to start organizing and getting um, ideas together. Yeah, I think there's some um, energy right now. Um, and so I've, I've gotten a, just nothing but positive feedback, except for maybe uh, the superintendent who, who didn't think it would make any money for the school district. But um, it's only been positive and, and, it, and a lot of interest. And so, yeah, let's let's jump on it and let's let's make it happen right now. But I, I can't see it happening. I, I know Ellen wants to, have, to see it happen right now, but <laughs> but it, I think it'll take a long time to get things going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Give it a Come on up. Yeah, Nicholas, here you go. No, thanks. Uh, I wasn't going to say anything because it's Mark's. Uh, my name's Nick Away, and uh, uh, I'm just, I, I served uh, while I was 10 years on the Krishnamurti board in the East End. I served also four years on the Oak Grove School Board. And uh, their, their motto is the art of living and learning and listening. <laughs> so I really should shut up very quickly. <laughs> but uh, uh, there are, um, uh, we had, we've had one coffee together, Mark and I, but we should probably have more. Uh, I uh, look at the, the specific site that we're discussing this afternoon as a piece of the downtown. And uh, I'm very concerned about the things that this little town and this valley have generated in 100 years or 120 years, 30 years or whatever it is. And we have issues that were brought up by, by Ellen and Mark, like the parking and the housing. And because of the success of uh, the banking and, and uh, real estate age, prices are out of the roof. And I've been in discussion with people who've lived here for actually generations who can't afford to live here. And certainly their children can if they'd like to actually have a community. We've used the word community here a number of times. So I'm just interested in uh, bouncing off ideas uh, on another, uh, on the same topic as a takeoff of what, what is really the town of Ojai going to be. And uh, so Andy Cantwell was the superintendent just before uh, Tiffany. I met him, he took us around uh, when we were still already talking about what to do, you know. It's been going on for decades. When I was a student at, from UC Berkeley, I'd come down and visit my parents and I said, what are they going to do with that, all that ground, you know, the downtown site? It's a, an underused piece of property and it's ready for an uplift, <laughs> but uh, no question about it. But how that happens, and whether everybody gets there in their machine, in a car, or, or we actually generate a place for people who want to live in Ojai, work in Ojai, have walked to their coffee roaster for, to meet their friend, walk to the movie, walk to mid, mid, Midtown, uh, Dave's, Dave West's Midtown, market. Uh, I just wanted, I feel like the art of living and learning and listening and enjoying Ojai is ready for a, a major look. And I think everybody here is obviously very bright and 
well-educated and is capable to carry on the discussion. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm sure, I, I've, I've made that comment about OI being an artist community and we should put that forward. I mean, that's my vision. Um, but yeah, I've I've had people come forward. Well, what about the school teachers? What about them? And so, so yeah, it it, it encompasses more than just the artists. Um, but um, you know, I think having a art center in the middle of town could you know, um, I think really change. Like I said in the beginning, beginning, it could really change the dynamics of the community in the you know in in that direction, um, and uh, change the arcades into art galleries and and I, I i think it could make a you know a huge impact to the community thank you i'm gail hersher I'm a relatively new uh, citizen of Ojai. Uh, I've been here almost 10 years and I've taught at Chaparral. I've taught at Besant Hill. I've taught at probably every place you can think of in town. And I've taught at several universities and most recently at the University of Hawaii. Um, if that was where I was before I moved here. Anyway, what I'm trying to get to is the fact that I'm basically from the East Coast. So I know quite a few of the places on the East Coast that are similar to what you're talking about. And I've been to them or either as a student when I was younger or um, as a faculty person. And they, the ones I've been to and have been involved with are always successful. Uh, they, they just don't fail. So that's not a worry for me. I, I think, I don't really remember your name, but I think you, the man in the plaid shirt there, I think your, your comments were excellent um, in that you don't want to lose what Ojai is or was. I'm from a town in, Mar in Massachusetts, Marblehead, Massachusetts. I don't know if any of you know it, but it's somewhat similar to Ojai. Bigger, but somewhat similar. But the place I'm particularly thinking of is a place called Haystack in Maine. Has anybody been there? It's, it's fantastic. And there are similar places that um, I think we could look at for how to get started, how to raise money, and what do you do with tourists? And how do you deal with parking? I mean, all, all of the issues that have come up. But I really do think this can happen and should happen. If anything would be good for this community, I think this would be it. That's my little spiel. Thank you for that. Who was, who was holding <clears throat> it? Were you holding it? No. I well, wanted to. Uh, uh, just for a second, address all of the art um, groups that are already here and functioning for a long time, like the music festival and the art center and all of the different art um, facilities that are here and have sustained throughout uh, the hundred years. Um, but most all of them, I was thinking about this, are, are about performing. They're like bringing music to the community. Uh, it's the same with the the art center, and I think what what Mark is talking about, or his the idea he has, is about the creativity of Ojai, and about creating art on all of those different levels in a school to learn about those arts. You learn, you you may dream of painting, but it's really good to learn some things about painting before you begin. You know, that's I. Anyway, I I. I think it can enhance all of the art facilities and art communities that are here to have a school and to have, um, there's so many professional artists here to teach, to bring their expertise to, to the community. Anyway, that's, that's my encouragement. And I think we have another one here. Um, I know I, I read some of the uh, about that property. 
accomplish and I'm the highest good and also I can't do that because we need to grow. And the highest and best good. The highest and best good. That's and for all development languages. And then they also, <laughs> oh, excuse me, I, maybe we can check that for me. That is a dollar sign. Oh, that <laughs> is a dollar that's, sign. That's and as Bill good. said, that is not real estate. Oh, standard. I thought the highest and best is meant for the community. But I'm sorry. Yeah, that's no, that's not what it is. Okay. Well, I will interpret it for the community. So. That's how you do it. I also think that this is really not this here and Chaparral is over there right now. Those two have very nice work. Well, of all, they are having to answer questions about chemistry. They don't even ask this kid about chemistry that. And those kids are some of the smartest and creative kids around. They don't quite fit into the regular, you know, boxes. But that's an incredible There is a wonderful farmer's market there. And people love to go there and buy groceries and see different things. And it's just, it's so wonderful. And there's so much more potential for that kind of thing. Thank you. Yeah, my son takes part in that farmer's market. So um, there, I was leaving space, uh, interior courtyard um, besides. It's a huge courtyard now, so I think it could house both the community center uh, structure and a, and a courtyard for the uh, continuing the farmer's market there. Uh, but also another aspect I didn't mention before was uh, the plaza. I think Nick, the, Nick had the same idea of the plaza in the front, the community plaza in the, in the front courtyard. Um, but then the... Um, I think Claude could teach a great cooking school in the in the, the where the school district offices are now, and maybe even a, a little um, a coffee house, you know, where the auditorium is now, where we could have performances and and uh, some of the students could um, do their acting or or uh, music performances there at the coffee house, and then maybe a, a cafe at the other end where the um, at the corner of Signal or uh, Montgomery and, and, and the Main Street would be a cafe. And so those, those are some of the other aspects of the project. That, that there's plans here in the front. If anybody wants to um, see the plans that was submitted to the newspaper, there's some, um, you could see it in detail. Oh, we got one more and then it's, uh, it will be, there we go. <laughs> Hi, my name's Jack and I'm, I've been in, here around three years, came from Santa Barbara, actually ran for city council in Santa Barbara. And there are analogies that can be drawn um, between the two communities. I actually, I, I love the energy in this room. I love everything I'm hearing. I actually just have a, a kind of point of clarification. The topic of housing has come up a number of times and often in reference to lo low income, elders, very low income, students. I'm an attorney. I also have a master's degree in global political economy. I make well over six figures. It's an issue for me. It's an issue for all of your kids. It's an issue for all of your grandkids. It's an issue for this community and we're not talking about, you know, them, whoever it is. It's a, it's a, it's a thing we need to talk about. Thanks. Yeah, I think everyone agrees with that. How this is all gonna weave together is the question, but we, we have some time, uh, I think, this is a good time to break and you um, people that need to leave can can do that uh, comfortably and if you want to stay and have some discussion with some of the people that have brought things up or come and look at Mark's drawings or um, whatever you'd like to do there's some refreshments in the back yeah and uh, thank you thank you all for coming to this I think we <laughs> Yeah, I think we'll continue to gather. We'll let you know. Thank you.